Hello, and today I want to talk about the science of impartation and activation. So, impartation is a very important part of spirituality. Very important part. Because it is a part of our development. It's a part of our growth. It For many of us, one truth is that you're receiving impartation one way or another. There's no real way around it. And actually, one of the ways that we navigate life, uh, if you want to view it that way, is a constant series of several impartations. Where um, something that I often teach is that you receive wherever you are and you impart wherever you've been. It involves this constant cycle of giving and receiving. And where there is a... Uh, seed being sown of some sort and whether that seed grows and uh, blossoms into whatever it, that seed uh, held within itself is entirely up to the cultivation of that seed. Now, understand that not all seeds are beneficial and some of them need to be discerned so that they can be uh, properly starved so that they don't grow. Um, so I want to talk about a bit of that today. So, as I express, impartation in itself as a part of this science that talks about um, the giving of energy of some sort, the giving of a thing, the transference of a thing, right? And oftentimes, um, when we think of impartation, we think of it by way of the laying on of hands, but um, while that is popular, that's not the only way by which an impartation can be transmitted. Um, impartation can be done through physical contact. It can be done through words. It can be th done through uh, art. <laughs> it can be done through proximity. It can be done through prayer. It can be done through many different outlets, right? But the main concept is that something is being given and something is being received. Or at the very least, an attempt is being made to give. And typically what people fail to realize when you're dealing with impartations, I'm a person of many encounters, right? Just sharing from my own life. I have received a ton of impartations throughout my life, and I might share a few stories here. Um... And I'm not the only one. There's several people all over the world. Many of you watching this may have be may be the recipients of several impartations in your life, as you should. I believe it's necessary. And one of the things that drives people crazy because they don't understand the science is that oftentimes when you're receiving an impartation, you're not receiving the fullness of what that individual carried. Uh, at the same level in, in which they now carry it. And oftentimes this confusion can fall upon the one doing the impartation because they might not know the science. Typically what's being released is that same thing, but in seed form. Which implies that there is an incubation process that that seed has to go through. There is a burial time in which it's stored within yourself, stored within your spirit, stored within you before the fulfillment of what that is comes to fruition. And that's something that has to be taken into account. Otherwise, you find people, you'll find yourself in a place where you're doubting the authenticity of an impartation. You're mishandling your impartations. Therefore, you're never reaping what was once sown into you. And it has to do with treating it as a seed. Learning how a thing needs to be nurtured. Right? Learning how a thing needs to be nurtured. If we're looking at a garden... Plants, flowers, fruit, vegetables, herbs, spices. Each of them need a certain amount of things. They need soil, they need water, they need sunlight. That is true. They each need a different amount of soil, a different kind of soil, a different amount of water, a different amount of sunlight. The same extra sunlight that one plant needs might absolutely burn through another. 
The sprinkler system that may water your flowers may destroy your tomatoes. So there, it, it, you, you cannot be lazy when it comes to impartation. You have to discern. You have to try the spirit. You have to learn the mechanics of what has been deposited within you so that you know how to cultivate it, how to nurture it. So the truth for many of you, the reason why you're not seeing the same power that your mentor, your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, why you're not seeing the same depth of which they walk in your own life isn't because they did not impart necessarily, but because you didn't steward the seed when it was given. And it is possible for a seed to die. So while I do believe in impartation, I do also do not believe in wasting people's time. So let's say you're a person and you're going and you want to receive an impartation from someone uh, because you realize, right? They carry something I don't carry yet. They're walking in something that I don't carry yet. Whatever it is. Right. And it doesn't even have to be a spiritual gift is the thing. Typically, when people think of impartation, they usually think, oh, that man or woman of God, they have this powerful miracle healing gift. I want that. They walk in the prophetic heavily. I want that. But impartation is for anything. Maybe that's the wisest person, you know. And you want to also be wise. Maybe they walk in a lot of compassion. They have great people skills and you don't have that yet. Maybe they might be one of the greatest organizers on the planet and you're not that organized. Maybe you're organized, just not that organized, right? Whatever it is, whatever you find value in is means for it to be an impartation. And you have to understand the mechanics. You have to be willing to nurture it. So once again, I blame the way impartation is presented because typically it's what I now walk in, you walk in. That's not true. That it's more true that I'm giving you the thing that I have. The extent by which you walk in it is entirely up to how much you exercise it. Now we get into responsibility. Now we get into cultivation, development, and growth. And we can really begin to bear some fruit on some of this. Now, Regarding impartation and activation, both are necessary. But what's really the difference? With impartation, I'm either giving you something that you don't have, or you might have a lesser amount than I currently have, a lesser quality, a lesser quantity, or someone else is uh, giving it to me. I'm the recipient. But in some way, shape, or form, something is being given and something is being received. Um, when we're talking about activation, activation has to do with discerning that a person carries something that they may not be aware of or is simply dormant within them. Now, typically the revelation of what is within someone will often cause that, uh, other people to deny the necessity of impartation as a whole. Because this is a higher truth that within every individual is the fullness of the Godhead. And if they tap into that, they have everything. that they, You already have everything. That is absolutely true. But functioning from a different place, we understand that practically, while it may be within me potentially, it's not functioning in me practically. And it takes an eye for discernment to recognize what's simply sleeping within an individual and what's altogether lacking. Some of you don't need a prophetic impartation. Some of you don't need an impartation of a healing gift. Some of you don't need an impartation. You need activation because you already have it. It's already a gift that you carry. You just don't know how to use it. You just don't know. You're just not aware of it. Things of that nature. All right. So this is something that I, I encourage people to do regularly in your own time with God. I believe in meeting with God, not just not. And when I say meet with God, I mean, meet with God. I'm not talking about go away privately and have a study session where you read your Bible and you listen to some audio books or some 
recorded sermons or messages, teachings from some of your favorite lecturers of all times. That's beneficial for the soul, but that's not what I'm talking about. When I say meet with God, I mean meeting with God, voice to voice, face to face. I am one of the greatest advocates of face to face, voice to voice interaction with God. I've been having those encounters since 2017. So that's why I'm weird, if any of you wanted to know. <laughs> and one of the most powerful things is those moments where you're receiving. Not when you're venting, as necessary as that is. But those moments where you're allowing the rest of God to minister to you, to give you something. Um, there's a man of God in Africa. I want to say he's from Zimbabwe, uh, Prophet um, Emmanuel Makandiwa. He recently became under fire a few months back because he made the statement that God is more that he is more gifted than God, and people took it the wrong way. His reasoning behind such a statement is that God is not lacking anything that he should that he would be needing to ever receive a gift. And I am. <laughs> it's, the, it's the idea that God is the giver of gifts, but is not in itself gifted at all. God is source. And, and uh, so when you approach God in that manner, understand that every encounter, every interaction is an impartation. Should you let it be? Many of you miss out, right? Some of you love me, you respect me, you recognize what I carry, and you want that on your life, no problem. But what if I say no? <laughs> what if I decide I'm not imparting anything to anybody? I'm not activating anyone in anything. You don't miss out on anything. Now, why, why would I say that you would miss out on anything just because, uh, even though I just said that impartations and activations are necessary, it's because I understand that if you are spending regular time with God, you will receive more than what I can give you. Because right now, I can only give, I can only give according to my level of consciousness. I can only give you what I think I have. And let's say I'm lacking in that self-realization category where I don't realize all that I really walk in. The Father is not. Mother, Holy Spirit is not. Yeshua and the rest of uh, the cloud of witnesses, they're not. They understand the fullness of what they walk in. So uh, the seven spirits, they're not lacking. So as you begin to regularly encounter... I've been having heaven encounters daily for years since, I want to say, 2018. So when I started encountering heaven daily, not as a state of consciousness, but as an actual location. And eventually I'll share some of those stories. Uh, I struggle to share stories about heaven because it's been daily. I don't, it's a regular part of my life. I talk about that in my book, but... If you're regularly encountering God, you're regularly having these divine meetings, setting divine appointments, and showing up for them, you'll receive more than what I can offer you, more than what anyone can really offer you. So the greatest impartations you can receive come from the Father and Holy Spirit, or Mom and Dad. It's the greatest impartations you can receive. Because as a son of God, as a child of God, the greatest nurturing you receive, the greatest building that you receive comes from your parents. Even in the natural, it's mom and dad. Even more in the spiritual, it's mom and dad. That they carry things, they, they carry within themselves the full capacity of what you are yet to become. That within your potential, you're exactly, but in your current reality, not yet. Nothing's wrong with not yet. 
So put a demand on your encounters. Put a demand on your meetings. That if you find yourself in lack, don't necessarily look for another man or woman to impart. Even though that's fine. That's fine. It's limited, but it's fine. Encounter God. Seek God for those things. Right? Some of the thing, One of the things that I talk about often is baptisms. And I'm going to be doing a video on that soon. But one of the things that I talk about is how the seven spirits of God each carry gifts and manifestations, which means that there's things that you won't get from Holy Spirit and you won't necessarily get from the Father. But as you go through your sonship process and you're engaging the seven spirits of God, they will begin to give you things. They will begin to awaken different things in you. They'll begin to gift you with different graces. So even functioning with the seven spirits, regularly encountering the seven is one of the greatest, most necessary aspects of our spirituality because they carry impartations that God won't give us. It's not that those things aren't within God. It's that as a part of our process, that duty has been entrusted to what the kingdom calls our tutors and our governors, which means that you find your impartations in divine relationships within the kingdom. So understand no one in history developed alone. They had some help, whether from within or without. <laughs> And that's one of the key aspects, understanding that you need help, that you need a little help to grow and knowing where to go for that help. Because I remember there was a time when I was first coming up where I realized my lack and my initial plan was once I get a car <laughs> and some money, I'm going to travel all over the place. I'm going to serve. I'm going to work under this person, that person, this person, that person. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that person to lay hands on me so that I can walk in what they got. And I was just going to fill myself up with that. None of that really happened. <laughs> so my, the reason I am the way that I am, the reason I can do what I do all comes from majority spiritual encounters. Some of my encounters with the cloud of witnesses, some of my encounters with the seven spirits, encounters with Yeshua, encounters with uh, Father, encounters with Holy Spirit, encounter after encounter made me who I am. Very few people on earth have given me an impartation. There are some that if I started to name drop, my views would go up, but I don't care that much about that. Um, but that's one of the key aspects. Understanding, right, that whether it be an activation or an impartation, understand that you need to process that. You need to exercise that. You need to grow in that. You need to develop it. For most it's not going to be a one-to-one. -one. It's not just going to happen overnight. The only thing that can happen overnight really is you changing your mind and beginning to work. You starting can happen immediately. But the manifestations, not really. Because even, and there's no better correlation than plants, plants have different time periods of when they're said to be mature, when they're able to produce fruit. Right. For some, it's a few weeks. For some, it's several months. For some, it can be up to over a year. Different plants even have different times in which they're expected to produce. So understand that within yourself, take some of the pressure off that you're not necessarily seeing the results of your impartations. No, that man or woman of God isn't false because uh, they imparted and you still can't see in the spirit. You have to cultivate these things. Now, in my case, I taught myself how to do a lot of things, but that's because I was in a space of constant impartation. Um, 
you've seen my testimony video, part of my story is that I spent three months with no sleep talking to God all day, all night. And in that time period, I was in such a spiritual place, I was constantly receiving. So it made it easy for me to cultivate and easy for me to nurture some of those gifts and some of those manifestations that I now teach on. But if there's anything to take away from this, meet with God. God's easy to meet with. <laughs> meet with God. Practice the presence. Practice your encounters. If you already know how to visit heaven, go. Typically, when I say I go daily, it makes people think I'm cool and that I have the ability to do something that they don't. But no, not really. I put all the steps and all the things and that stuff in my book. It's, it's, it's very easy. You need to encounter God. That's the most important thing. Encounter God. And sculpt your life based on those encounters with God. So that'll be all for this session. Um, <laughs> do I want to tell a story? No, nah, I don't want to tell a story. Yeah, so that'll be it for this session. Um, please leave some comments down below. Let me know what other things you would like for me to talk about in the comments below. Um, that's it. Later.